Working Interferences is intended for mature audiences. Since the host never grew up, someone needs to be the adult. Welcome to Working Interferences with Josh and Lance, the dental advice podcast for the average dentist. Here is Josh and Lance. Bros, what is up? Welcome to the Working Interferences Podcast, a dental advice show. I am Joshua Austin. And I am Lance Timmerman. Lance, over the weekend we had a little discussion over text about yeah. the possibility of maybe adding a, a video component to a segment of the show, maybe putting it on YouTube, something like that. Yeah. You remember that? I, yeah, I was wondering if perhaps, you know, maybe people prefer us this way anyway, and uh, that would shun the video aspect, but I thought it was something to, to talk about. Yeah. We talked about maybe doing like a snippet or something like that. Like yeah. that, that may, may want to suck people into the show, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. so to speak. And so, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm all about sucking people. Uh, yeah. It's like it's sucking them in uh, oh. to the show. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, whatever. <laughs> Jane, Joan, you do you. Uh, <laughs> what was the last time you had family pictures taken Lance? Uh, a year ago. Okay. Um, something happens to me every time I get, uh, a picture taken. Okay. Um, and maybe other people can identify with this. Maybe not. I don't know. I'd be interested to find out. Are you like Chandler um, trying to get uh, wedding photos? I don't know that story. I'm not a, I'm not a huge you, friends guy. You weren't a friends guy. Oh, okay. Then, uh, sorry. You tell me after I tell you what happened and you tell okay. me if this is what happened to Chandler. Okay. I got a massive zit on my cheek. <laughs> <laughs> That I felt like boiling up. I, ne- I hadn't felt it before. Uh-huh. I felt it boiling up the day before we took our photos. Like, uh, oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course. So it kind of boiled around all weekend. And, and on the way home, I looked at it in, in the mirror in my driver's seat and thought, oh, man, this thing is it's almost this, this thing's almost ready for a little squeeze in action. You know, the best part uh-huh. of the pimple is, is the popping. Dr. Pimple Popper. Ex- those videos are massive for a reason. People love that shit. It's and crazy. so uh, I saved it for you, Lance, and I was all ready to pop <laughs> this bad boy for you tonight on the camera feed that we're going to uh-huh. do. And then uh, I pull up, I, I fire up. It's an answer, the Skype call, and I answered it with camera. I was like, you ready to do this? Because this thing's boiling up. And uh, yeah. you said, yeah, nah, we're not going to do that. Like, okay. Yeah. Had I known that I was going to be greeted with the um, mother with of the all zits, I, yeah. I would have gotten a camera set up for it. That's all right. Maybe next time. Yeah. I'm sure another one will pop up. So we'll I'm going to, uh, so to speak, uh, well, <laughs> as soon as this thing is over, I'm beelining it to the bathroom. I'm going to see if I can uh, see if I can paint the mirror with this, uh, okay. with the, the, right. this, this gooey, gooey inside. Do you everyone's, a... Everyone loves it. Everyone loves popping is it. Seems that way. It seems that way. Do you have a home remedy for every time you get something like that, what to do to get it to go away sooner or come to a head sooner or both? No. So, I, you know, I've over the past year, like one of the things I've done over the past year is tried to like take control of my skin a little bit and like try to or take better wow. care of it. Good for you. So I've like done like the whole, you know, I went to Kiehl's and got the whole like test done where they test the moisture levels and uh-huh. all that. And um, and and so I've been do- using a lot of Kiehl's products. I don't, I don't really have like once it, you know, my whole sort of hope is to prevent it from happening. But then when I get one, I don't really have anything that makes it go away faster. Um, so I'm, I'm open to anyone's suggestions if they've got something that, that helps. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, but it seems like now, like I don't get little ones, which is cool. But when I do get one, it's been, they've, the, the few that I've gotten have been like, like beefy boys. Hmm. Yeah. I like beefy boys. All right. So you're, how <laughs> you're what you're, are you 48? Sure. How old are you? 49. 49. Do you, do you still you still get a zip from time to time at forty nine? From time to time, thing? yeah, it still happens. Yeah, okay. Jesus, what, yeah, it, it the liver. What, go what away. is it? It's it shouldn't be. You shouldn't get a backache from something mundane and also get zits. It's one or the other, right? Yeah. Don't give me like growing old problems, but then also every once in a while a teenage problem. Yeah, and if I'm gonna have a teenage problem, I don't want the like, oh, my tailbone hurts from sitting on the floor for five minutes. Right. Yeah. If I want a teenage problem, I want to pick the teenage problem. (laughs) Yeah. No. No. 
talk too much. I guess, yeah. I'm okay. trying. I'm trying to <laughs> say. <Deflect that one. laughs> I'm trying. There's there's something I want to say without without, without saying, saying what okay. I want to say. We may get into it in question two. Let oh. me just put it that way. Oh, okay. Um, we may get into it in question two. Um, I also texted you this evening, and I wanted you to do a little homework for me. Uh-huh. And it uh, it took you all about two seconds. Two seconds. Um, so I think I well, think you have it done. Tis the season. Uh, well, I recently I asked you to write something down, and you were just. I don't remember what it was, <laughs> but you had you were no help for me at that at that point. Well, I don't remember what, I think, what we were I talking think you about. Re- made the request like we'd already started or something. Where I'm like, I don't have paper. Ah, <laughs> <sighs> Lance. Okay, I, I, don't, I wish I remember what that was. It was. Like two weeks ago, <laughs> it it's wasn't a long. horrible memory. Yeah, horrible time. <laughs> I thought we could rank our top five Thanksgiving foods because it's uh-huh. Thanksgiving week, and yeah. for the first time ever, I feel like we've identified. Hey. <laughs> There's a holiday coming up, yeah. and we we know about it before we record the show. Yeah, so uh, that's, that's normally we're right. we're a week late on these things. But uh, I, do you do you want to go one to five, or do you want to go five to one? I think five to one is better. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I didn't really do them in order. You didn't rank them. You just listed I five list, of your favorites. All so good. Like I'm not sure I could pick my favorite. Um, okay. They're pretty close. I could probably give you my one or two, but the rest of them are all equals. All right. I'll do my... I will go down from five to one. Okay. And then you just go through your list and we'll alternate back and forth. Okay. So my number five is a good homemade yeast roll. It's really the only time a year that that my sister will make like homemade rolls. Okay. I mean, she doesn't do it every year, so I'm hoping she does it this year. But outside of that, like it just doesn't make any sense to like go through the trouble of like making a homemade okay now you're roll. you're hoping this is one of your favorites yet you're hoping that she's going to make it i i why wouldn't you just make the request assign it it's just because it's because then you owe her no it's just like she does a lot of other stuff anyway and so, you know like she's right. already doing other stuff and so i don't want to just like add on stuff you could do the passive aggressive. Uh, hey, you know this is my. Oh, that's favorite. the only way that we do things in my <laughs> okay. family is right. this passive aggressive. Perfect. Yeah, but there's just something like there's no other meal of the year that you're going to take the time to do a homemade roll. That's a yeah. this, 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 this is like, true. Thanksgiving, Christmas. That's it. Those are the but, only yeah, absolutely ones. true. Absolutely. Give me, give me one of yours. All right. A few years ago, the very first time we ever visited Nashville, we made our way out to a distillery. And uh, Greenbrier mm. had this uh, bourbon that uh, was amazing. We brought it home, and we cooked a spiral ham in a crock pot with this bourbon. And wow. this ham is to die for. All of our cr- conservative Christian people that had come over to eat, too, that they, like, devoured it. And we're like, should we tell them the bourbon was in there? We, I, think the, I think the alcohol cooks out, right? No. No, <laughs> not enough. Not enough. Okay. I see. I'm not. I'm not sure. I had the same conversation with somebody the other day uh-huh. about whether or not alcohol cooks out of something. It can. Uh, it depends on the method. And I. I believe okay. this one. Some cooks out, but a lot still remains. But it. Okay. By far the most flavorful ham I've ever had in my entire life. So now let me ask you this, because here's my take on ham, and okay. this may be, this may be a hottest take. Okay. Ham is an accessory meat. Uh huh. I don't want ham as a main meat. Agreed. Yeah. And that's why it was adjacent to the turkey. Okay, good. Good, good, good. As long as we're good on that, I, I've every once in a while I run into somebody who has the horrible take that ham and turkey are substitutable. No, 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 no. They are not synonyms. Nope. Or homonyms or whatever you would call them. They it's ham ham is um trying to think of a good sports analogy ham ham is john stockton there you go but it doesn't like without carl malone and the turkey it's it just doesn't it's not nearly as effective yeah yeah that's that's a good way to put it ham ham is the john stockton of meats especially the way that we used to have the ham where it was just a a a wedge of hormel ham out of the can that's yeah no we're not even yeah that was Okay, fine. And it was it was too thick cut, and so yeah, it just didn't like it. But then when we did the spiral cut in the crock pot with all this bourbon, suddenly yeah. 
It had a now nice it's, crust. Yeah. It had, it was, it, everything about it, great texture, great flavor. Every, well, it's now elevated itself to a okay. uh, starring role. Number four for me, sweet potato casserole. Yep, that's on my list. And here's what I, yeah, here's what I need. And you tell me if you need the same thing, and we'll cross this off each other's list. Okay. I have to have brown sugar cinnamon. Yep. Layer that. And then it's got to have melted marshmallows on top. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because some people don't do the melted marshmallows, and I don't know if that's a southern thing. Well, it's got to be the melted, but then you have to do the like that little flame thing, like you're going to do a creme brulee. So yeah, you, I toasted it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that outer crust. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's got to have that. If it doesn't have that, it's not sweet potato casserole. It's not right. It's, yeah, it's just it's not that. It's It's not the right thing. Exactly. Hit me with your uh, number four. My number four. Uh, so a few years back, I think I mentioned this previously that uh, years ago we got the the oil fryer and we were frying turkeys yeah. and, and it was yeah. great. And I was arrogant. I thought I was the best turkey guy. Somehow Holly came across this method called brining the turkey. Yeah, you got brining. And we said, Ooh. you know what? Not yours is good. But mine's good. We we had a Pepsi challenge of the turkeys, and so I did the the. Uh, fat fried one and she did the brined and everybody let me down gently as they gave their opinion they're like lance yours is really really good you should be really really proud of this but (laughs) 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 and so but to be honest that's a big heavy butt after that you should be proud of this that's a big old butt and but they weren't wrong. The the brined turkey, the yeah. way Holly does it, she you know she brines it for at least two days in advance. She's got this wow. recipe of stuff that she so, lit with smoke and all the different. Oh, so, so she'll do this tomorrow. This we're recording uh-huh. on Monday night. She'll do this Tuesday. I think she started tonight. But yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good three day brine. Oh, it it comes out so good that yes. uh, I no longer fry a turkey. Well, in a way, some someone accused me of. Hey, isn't that like when you first get married and you go to do the laundry and then you could do the your something red with all the whites, so you destroy the whites, and now you're no longer allowed to do laundry? Yeah, this, you did this on purpose. <laughs> and I, I looked at him. I said, "That's a really good idea," but no, uh, I honestly, yeah, it's too much planning. Yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. My number three is is deep fried or a sous vide. Oh. Turkey breast. Sous vide's a great way. You can't do a whole it'd be hard to do a whole turkey in a sous vide. You need multiple circulators and you would yeah. need a a big sort of vat to do it. I'm sure it could be done. We uh you ch- we got into the sous vide enough that I went and took a, a Coleman camp uh, uh cooler and drilled mm-hmm. a hole in the top so that you'd be nice. able to put the uh sous vide motor or whatever that thing yeah. is through it. Circulator. Yeah. yeah. So that we could do really big items. And uh, that might be the thing for you to do. Yeah, you know, and then you got to sear the outside after the sous vide. Yeah. So on a big turkey that's uneven, it's gonna be hard to do. On a on a turkey breast, it's much easier, and yeah. it, it just turns out really great. So a few times a year, Andrew and I will sous vide a turkey breast. Nice. Uh, we use the Jewel sous vide. There's a couple of of different popular uh-huh. sous vides. One of them is called a Jewel, J O U L E, like the unit of energy. Uh-huh. Um, and one of its one of them is called an Anova. That's the one we uh, have. We use yeah, we use a Jewel. They're they're pretty similar. Um and and there's a a 20 on the Jewel app, there's a 24-hour turkey breast recipe. So so it's one of those things that we, I have to pre-prep it cuz you generally get a turkey breast from the store. It's frozen. You uh-huh. got to thaw it. Yep. Uh, although you could put it in frozen. It may take a few hours longer. But um, you got to thaw it. Then you sear one side. You sear the skin side down for a couple minutes and then throw it in the bag, get it sous vide sous vide it for 24 hours, and then pull it out, drain it, sear the rest of it. And it's 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 the juiciest thing I've ever had Nice. Um, from a turkey standpoint. Right. Give me your next one. So we've had two... We've had two, uh, two. Uh, you hit my battleships. Yeah, uh, Holly has this amazing family recipe style of deviled eggs, where she has oh. some bacon, bacon bits in the deviled nice. eggs. So it's Thanksgiving's not the same if we don't have those out on the the hors d'oeuvres table while everything else is happening. You know, we we yeah. have like basically three meals. You know, you got the the beginning. Phase, then you've got the sit the table phase, and then you have the rest of the stuff while you yeah. finish watching football. So uh, that was the one of the early phase. Things. Okay, 
not a traditional. I don't think I don't think you'd consider a devil egg a, a traditional Thanksgiving fare, but I like it. I like the ingenuity and yeah. a devil egg. A deviled egg is great. Uh, you know, it, it, it's uh, it's one of those things that I don't think I could eat like five of them. Oh, I bet I could. You could. Oh Oof. yeah, I could think that, that car like... that car ride home with Lance is gonna be tough <laughs> after that after the five deviled eggs. Uh huh. Luckily, good. luckily we're hosting, so there's no car ride home. There's I, no car ride home. I'm yeah, but it's, here. somebody's got to sleep in the bed with you. Nah, that's optional. How about uh, my number two is pecan pie? Ah, there's mine. Okay, on there too. So we're we're similar. If 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 it's a gun to your head and you've got to pick one pie to have a slice of, to me it's 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 no choice. It's the pecan pie. It's pecan pie. Yeah. Yeah. Pump, pumpkin is fine. It's fine, sure. But it's like I, yeah, I it just. I need. I need a, a very crust. small. Yeah, and it. I need a tiny piece of pumpkin. A little gelatinous. Just to say I've had some. Yeah. But it's it's more about about the pecan. The pecan is is really where my heart is. Yeah, my mom when she's out cutting slices. Hey, wh- who wants what? Who? Wa-? And everybody else says, I'll have one of each. And I'm like, yeah, give me a sliver of the pumpkin to satisfy that I had one of each. But yeah, give me that big old wedge. Of the pecan pie. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. Now, you said pecan. Pecan. Uh, that pecan pie. Guy's thinking Harry pecan? Met Sally. I don't know that one. Uh, I, like I honestly don't think I've ever seen that movie. Oh, my God. That's a good show. You should see it. She literally comes in a restaurant. She does. Well, no, she literally fakes it to prove that women okay. can fake it. That, okay. That he, he insisted no one's ever faked it on him. And she goes, uh, yeah, they have. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Good show. And one point, didn't think we didn't think we were going to end up at that one. No. I didn't think I was going to say she comes at a restaurant tonight. <laughs> well, she's coming around the mountain. I can tell you that. Yeah, I hear that. Well, I when she that. comes, yeah, when she comes, yeah. that's right. Um, number one for me is dressing. Yeah. Now, do you do dressing or stuffing? Those are different. Uh, I believe Holly makes dressing. Yes. So just she, it's not made inside the turkey, right? Right. See, that's where you get into all kinds of foodborne illness things right there. Exactly. It doesn't cook in that bad. You have to cook it outside of that. Now, let me ask you this. Uh-huh. What's the base for her dressing? Oh, God, I don't know. You don't know? Okay. It, cornbread's the only right answer. Okay. That might be it. I, I don't know. There's certain things that – she's got certain recipes that are very, that very she, popular. She yeah. will not share. Uh, okay. So We have – some of this issue in my family and at some point <laughs> someone's going to die and the recipe's going <laughs> to die with them well, and it has to be passed on so at some point like this has to get passed on right she's she's got it it's available for that type of situation as well she just doesn't want to go to events where people are bringing something and then someone brings it too and so so she's given the recipe out she's got this jalapeno cheese dip that uh, she'll give out if you move. Oh, I like that you're, qualification. You're moving out of state. I won't cross paths with you. Fine. The, here okay. it is. So it's like a it's like an area code. You have to move area codes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not just zip code. Yeah. Yeah. You you gotta be far. I like it. I like it. Anything else that you covered on that that's or that I that I covered that you didn't uh, uh we also do d- discover when we did the bourbon uh ham, we also mm-hmm. discovered a bourbon mac and cheese. Oh, okay, so I'm not. I, how does that work? Because mac and cheese, the sweetness of bourbon, I'm not sure does much for mac and cheese. You're gonna, yeah, you'll add that into the the cheesy sauce and everything, uh, just enough to get the flavor, but not to change the consistency of the cheese and, and, and such. But you're gonna have these, um, I don't know, bread crumbles or something in there to give it a little added texture as well. So it's not just, and I think there's some bacon in there too. So it's a uh, interesting. It's it's been a hit the past couple uh, Thanksgivings as we've uh, had the the dish okay. out. So okay, I, I'm not I color me a little skeptical on that one. I'm not sure how bourbon and, and mac and cheese go together, other okay. than you drinking the bourbon while you eat the craft <laughs> yeah. macaroni and cheese. That's one way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's happened to all of us at some point. We've been there. Lance, this is an advice show. It's a shitty one. Jesus, that was 20 minutes. Oh, shit. Christ. <laughs> we answer your questions. Answer questions we find on all those neat little dental Facebook groups. 
We answer questions from Reddit. Reddit! We strive to help dentists and dental team members with our own unique brand of advice. So please, we need your questions. They are the sustenance we crave. You can submit your questions to workinginterferences at gmail.com. Now, we don't want just any question, do we, Lance? Not this week. We don't want a bunch of boring questions like, what's the best Thanksgiving food? Because we all know that cranberry sauce from a can <laughs> is the greatest Thanksgiving food of all time. We want the questions that Gordon Christensen cannot answer. You think Gordo likes like fresh cranberry sauce, or do you think he likes that like sliced from a can? Uh, he wants the green jello. I think he likes the sliced from a can. Probably. I just I feel like that's his thing. It just seems like something Gordon Christensen would be into. I think you're right. Listener AA writes. My sister is being a real female dog. He used a different <laughs> word, but I don't want to call it sister. Pity. I did some really nice veneers for her from a great lab and asked her to just pay the lab bill. I told her uh, this way before we began, and she said, of course. Six months have gone by since I bonded them, and they look great, and she loves them. However, every time I ask her to pay the lab bill, she keeps saying stupid stuff like, do you remember when you were six and I dressed you up like a princess and you were so happy twirling around in your dress all day? She says many such things, which true or not, don't even matter. Now I'm pissed off and thinking about sending her to collections because she's planning on buying a new home in six months. And I know this will fuck with that. Am I being a monster? Have any of you been in a similar situation? What are the right circumstances to send your sister to collections? This has been a burning question in my mind even before I did the veneers for the last two years, to be exact. Thank you for all the time you put in to help us stand us out. I followed all of your advice since episode one, and I might have 15 board complaints against me, but I'm looking to tell them the same thing I say every time. Celebrate the foreskin. Looking forward to many more years of WI. Sincerely, looking forward to Thanksgiving dinner. Lance, as far as I know, only one of us. <laughs> uh-huh has experience with potentially uh -huh. sending a family member to collections. Yeah. Well, I should qualify. It only got as far as pre-collect. Uh, okay. But I, I don't even know what that means. What is pre-collect? Okay. So we have a system where we don't just jump straight into screw you. you here's the collections agency. We, we have uh, three forms. And one is just kind of a shot across the bow saying, hey, you know, life gets busy. Sorry, we, we, are, we weren't a priority, but you do owe us money. Uh, here's, here's the information and, and things like that. Next letter you get is saying, hey, this is getting a little serious now. We haven't heard from you. Uh, no good faith effort of anything. And then finally, the third letter is, look, you're, you're totally ignoring everything we're saying. The next word will, will come from the collections agency. Here's the, here's the copy of all the records of everything, and, and now it's on its way. So I got as far as that with my sister. So here's here's the story. I, more than one few people have been asking me for this story because we brought it up, I think, on episode one or two. It was early. <laughs> we brought it up about 40 times. Have we? Okay. So here, here's the story. Yeah. When I bought my practice, prior to me buying the practice, I actually worked as an associate. And during the associate time, my sister decided to bring her and her seven kids and, and extended family to come on down and have me see them. Now, they're two hours away, so they made a big old trek, and so we had to take x-rays. She didn't bring any x-rays. She gave, had nothing, and so uh, she had some insurance, but, you know, I, that wasn't something. I mean, I'm a new grad. I don't know anything about anything, and so everybody had a full series of x-rays, so I had records to look at things. Did a few fillings on several of the kids, and uh, fast forward a few months, I buy the practice, and at the, right around the same time of me buying the practice, the guy I bought from, his son had come in and had some work done, too. And so we were starting to kind of negotiate kind of the, the end was coming along uh, between our relationship and uh, between the guy I bought from. And so my sister's account actually was part of uh, the other guy's accounts receivable and his son was in my accounts receivable. So I literally had to purchase my sister's account from him uh, uh. to get it away from him because she wasn't paying him. So now I have this hundreds of dollars of, of everything. And so we sent a letter, the, the pre-collect and guy was ignored. Got the second letter saying, Hey, got ignored. 
finally I got a letter, I think before the third letter, saying, kind of chastising me that I took fancy x-rays. What, the insurance wouldn't pay because I took fancy x-rays when she just needed normal x-rays. And I'm like, what? Now, is that, is, are fancy x-rays like fancy ketchup? Is that sort of? I believe so. It's like the Grey Poupon. <laughs> it's, uh, right. you know. I have a feeling what she meant was full series instead of just routine bite wings or something. Like she wasn't, frequency limitation prevented them from paying the whole thing or something along those lines. But she didn't even make an, an effort to, to pay me anything whatsoever. And I literally had to purchase the value of what she owed away from the guy that I bought the practice from. So I felt pissed and sent the final pre-collect letter. I think what ultimately happened is then it finally went up the flagpole. Mom and dad heard about it. And then <laughs> I get a check. I'm not sure who wrote the check, but the check comes in. I got paid in full at that point. I was going to say, please tell me the check didn't come from your mom and dad. I have a feeling. Well, the thing is with my folks and, and my Indirectly. sister, they, they subsidized a lot of her life. Yeah. So even if it was written in my mm. sister's hands, it was probably from my dad. Yeah, that sucks. So it never got so far to collections that uh, it was going to affect her credit or anything. But the stamp was on the envelope, ready to go. Does going to collections affect your credit? It can. The I I feel like I mean if if they if collections tries to collect it and they don't, I feel like that's when it would affect your credit, right? Not just yeah, not just sending. If they if you send somebody to collections and then they pay it, I don't feel like that would affect their ability to buy a house. I believe I think you're right. I think if okay. you ignore this collections agency, then they have the ability to, to file something to, and experience. yeah, Experian and all that. I think. My problem with collection agencies, and I don't have a lot of, of experience with them. <laughs> there used to be this guy on Facebook who was like, that was his thing was collections. He'd be in all the groups. I don't remember his name. But he used a Bitmoji a lot to like talk. About, he would like have this Bitmoji Doug or something like that. And it would like, uh -huh. it, it, he would use that to like talk about Bitmoji Doug is going to talk about collections for your office or what and it was just like i don't i don't need the my collections agent to like be super into bitmojis that's very strange like yeah you're not a 13 year old girl what what's going on anyway i don't know anything about collections i've never used one but i, I feel like i know that they take a huge percentage of whatever they collect it's a, they, uh, it's a fair like chunk 40 yeah. percent something like that yeah i hate that they didn't do any. Like they made a couple fo threatening yep. phone calls. That's it. You're the one that that did the dentistry. You're the one that uh -huh. did all the stuff. Yeah, you have to look have at a, it. It's is the fifty percent better than zero percent? Like, were you not going to collect? This? I, yeah, sure. I get that. I totally get that. I have a better idea, especially for a family situation. Okay. And I'm going to preface this by saying I hadn't thought about this person in many years. Okay. And I was at the gym the other day. And this young woman was on the television at the gym, one of the TVs at the gym. And I didn't recognize who she was. And I went close to the TV and I was baffled to see that Judge Judy has a, has a slapping new haircut, my friend. Oh. Slapping new haircut. I mean, it's – Judge Judy's haircut before was like my mother's haircut. And now um, she's had some styling done, my friend. Some styling. Um, I think you take your sister to Judge Judy. You know, that's probably a better way to go. You know it's going to be good TV. Oh, yeah. You know it's going to be good TV. Oh, yeah. You're going to get all your money. You're not going to have to share half of it with the collections agent. Yeah. And you get to be in the same room as the richest woman in Hollywood. Yeah. True. I'm pretty sure that Judge Judy is the richest woman in Hollywood. She's, she's up there. She signed some pretty fat contracts. Yeah. Let's take a look here. Judge Judy... She's the highest paid TV host in the world. Mm. Do you want to have? You want to take any guess as far as how much money she made last year? Well, I know at one point it was a fifty-seven million dollar contract. You're not even in the right zip code. Damn it! Hundred and forty-seven million dollars last year. Wow. 
Judy Scheindlin. Wow. She's got a $147 million glow up going on right now with her new haircut. They call that a glow up, Lance. Okay. When, when you get like a makeover and you look good oh. after not looking so good, she's got the glow up going. I'm just searching right now, Judge, Judge Judy glow up. Yeah, I'm not Seeing familiar. what comes up. Never had a glow um, up. I've had a Manny Petty, but you've had a reverse glow up. I think oh. you've had a you've had a rust down because I've seen the pictures of you from like when you're in Paris and you're like hanging out with Sonic's hat on backwards. Uh. It looks like it's it's from a f-ing collective soul video, <laughs> and then I, I've and I've seen you now, and yeah, it's 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 I hate to say it, Lance, it's the reverse glow up. All right, um, yeah, Judge Judy's got this full scale glow up going on, my friend, and so oh. I just found a picture of Judge Judy in a bikini. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, she does have a cover-up on. Um, like a sarong? Yeah, something like that. But it's like it's like sheer, and she's got a white bikini on underneath. And uh, Slapping? Holy shit, my friend. <laughs> like, I'm surprised. Uh, I would not have expected. I mean, $147 million will buy you a lot of... of Plastic surgery and personal chefs and trainers and all that shit. Sure. And uh, damn, bro. Judge Judy. Wow. All right, then. Wow, wow, wow. Um, I get, I get, let me just figure out. I just want, I want our listeners to, if we did video, we'd really be able to, to nail this. Judge, I'm just going to just type this bad boy in. Yeah, you type in uh, Judge Judy Bikini on Image Search on Google. Uh, and, and you will find uh, Judge Judy in a bikini, uh, which answers the question. Anything you want to find on the Internet is out there for the taking, my friend. Are you looking? I am. I'm. Uh... Oh, there she is. It's not bad, right? No. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely like older lady, but it's like older lady who takes really damn good care of herself. Well, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Pretty staggering. Was not expecting that. Was not expecting that. Um, I think yeah. For, let's forgo collections. AA. Let's let's get you and your sister on Judge Judy. Um, and I feel like Judge Judy's just gonna rail on your sister. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. really do because it's obvious that she hates all women. Um, I've seen her just go, just go like full all out bitch mode on on women before good um and she's got this new hairstyle going she's got the globe going on she's a little extra sassy uh you know your sister's gonna go in there start talking this this cross-dressing story which i think is weird um about you and 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 i think judge judy's just gonna just gonna snap off a uh snap off a uh a uh who probe in your sister uh as she as she turns the knife um I think you're going to win, and I think you're going to get all of it, and I don't think you're going to have to share it with the collection agency, and it's a win-win. There and, you go. And, and your family was featured on Judge Judy, which is really the highlight of any of any family. That's right. A little family reunion there on TV. At, uh, what's not to love? <laughs> Who doesn't love that? You can show it every year at Thanksgiving. Uh-huh. Everybody will have a good time and remember the time that you got to stand in the same room with Judge Judy. And now that you know what she looks like underneath that robe, AA, imagine what that's going to be. You're standing in that room. She's railing on your sister. You're just staring at her in that robe, and you're just imagining what's going on underneath it. It's a good day. Perfect. It's a good day. Hey, Lance. Yeah. You got a website, right? I do. I feel like you, you probably are, are kind of like me. You probably look at like the analytics of your website. Right? Every day. You ever notice like you get a decent amount of clicks on your website, but then those people don't turn in to patients per se. Right. Yep. And I always wonder like, where are all these people going? Like, are they come to my website and then the, what happens to them? They bounce. Does Thanos snap his fingers and, and half of them just go away? I feel like that's what happens. It's a theory. It's a, it, it's a great, it's a, it, it's not just a theory lens. It's a hypothesis. Uh-huh. Um, so I've started a new thing. Uh, we've started using this new deal at, at my office, and it's something that I reviewed for Dental Economics and liked it so much I kept it. Uh, if you go to my website, you can do it on your phone. You can do it on your desktop. You can do it on a laptop. You can do it on an iPad. 
Um, you can do it on a Razor phone. Anywhere, any, anything that you have access to the internet, go to my website, joshuaaustindds.com. And Lance, I want you to look down in that uh, lower left-hand corner of the website. Do you see anything special down there? I'm almost there. Why is my server having issues? Oh, no. Right during the middle of a live read, Lance, what are we going to do? Riveting radio. There we go. Now, okay. so I'm looking where? Bottom left? Bottom left-hand side. There should be maybe a little green box. Uh-huh. You see a little green box down there? What does that little green box say? New patient's book now. I want you to click on that, Lance, and what do you see? A whole bunch of options. A whole bunch of appointments, right? Yeah. Schedule widget allows you to let your new patients book an appointment with you for their new patient exam directly from your website. And guess what? All of this happens to you, the dentist, for free. Really? No charge involved. Simply go to schedulewidget.com. Fill out the sign-up button. It takes all of five minutes. You need your webmaster's email address. They will email your webmaster a little piece of code that goes on your website. They install that code. You set up your profile, and you you are up and going in less than 10 minutes. Watch a couple of training videos on how to set everything up, and you are good to go. You can be allowing and capturing those leads that come to your website, turning those into new patients in the most frictionless way possible. Think about a new patient or a prospective new patient that comes to your website. Lance, what do you think the odds are that they are looking at your website during a time in which you're open? Pretty good chance. You think so? How many hours a day are you open? (laughs) Not in my office, but for others, yeah. It's a 33% chance that they are looking at your website while you're open. You're open eight hours a day. There's 24 hours in a day that people are looking at your website because it's open all day. So what are they doing the other 66% of the time? They're clicking on someone else's website. So capture them before they make it to another website. Get them scheduled. Get them in the computer. And that's what Schedule Widget can do for you. Again, not charging the dentist anything. I know it seems like it's too good to be true, but I know the owner of the company, and he's trying to build his company a different way. And he's doing so by building a platform that the entire industry of dentistry can use to grow their practices. So check it out. Schedulewidget.com. Request a demo. Get it up on your website and allow those potential new patients to come rolling in. Schedulewidget.com. Cool. All right, Lance, you ready for the next question? I think so. Reddit user (laughs) good ass journalist asks, (laughs) dentists, Are the chairs fun to lie in when not being a dentist on? (laughs) They seem it. I'm not a dentist, and I have bad teeth. So I know them only as uh, centers of agony, but they look like they'd be great to nap in. Also, I am open to hearing any NSFW tales of fun in dentist chairs. Yes, yes, I am. I bet you would. Lance, are dental chairs... Fun to lie in when they're not being dentist on. Not really. They're f***ing chairs. Yeah, I... (sighs) All right. Let's... I have a few things to unpack here. I have had staff members that take naps in the chairs at lunch. I've been there. Totally cool. I've never done it myself, but I have shit to do during lunch. So I'm not taking a nap during lunch. If I did, I I assume it would be fine. But I prefer a couch or a bed for a nap. How many patients do you have that say, "Wish I had one of these at home"? Um, I, I don't. Yeah. I don't wish I had a dental chair at home. Yeah, we we have one of our chairs. We've got the uh, NASA approved foam thing <laughs> where. 
you know, cause we do some sedation and so you, I don't want you rolling out of the chair so that you get kind of locked in by the big foam mattress yeah. that's sitting on top. Those are pretty comfortable. And then I've had a few say, Oh, I wish I could take this home. And yeah, I, it's more of a factor of the foam and not the chair. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I'm not saying they're uncomfortable, uh -huh. but I'm also just, I just don't think they're the most comfortable things ever. I, I was at Costco a couple weeks ago and they have like the $7,000 massage chair. And I, I sat in it for a second. Yeah. And it was great. I mean, I don't think it's worth seven grand, but it was way more comfortable than my chair. And so I, I just don't think they're all that great. I mean, they're fine. What you really like is that they recline and they have a little padding. That's pretty much it. And there's lots of different things you can do that at way less of a cost yeah. than what a dental chair costs. I mean, that 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 massaging chair at Costco was half of what a dental chair costs. Yeah. And that's as nice of a massage chair as they get. So I don't know. I'm I'm out on that. I, I You know, it's I don't need it to take a nap in during the day. I'm not taking a nap during the day. I got shit to do. I'm too busy. I, the real key to this question for me is the, the next part of it. I love how they were super open about how they would really like to hear some erotica about people f***ing in the dental chair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they didn't say it that way, but they said it that way. They said it that way. So I just have to ask, Lance. Has it ever happened? At the old office, yeah. It was, At the old yeah. office, okay. <laughs> uh -huh. I so I've got I don't have a huge office. I only have four operatories. Um, I feel I know at least one operatory, and I'm not going to say which one because one of my hygienists listens to the show. Uh oh. And I I don't want to confirm or deny that it is her operatory or may not be her operatory. <laughs> right. It's a twenty five percent chance. Uh huh. Um, I'm trying to think if there's ever been anything else besides that one operatory um i mean listen i don't know what the percentages are but you've got two dentists here on this on this podcast uh-huh and we're we're batting a thousand uh -huh. between the two of us yeah what percentage do you think because i sort of got into this on the thread on reddit because i was i you know i i was I, i'm just interested in that that's the ADA is not tracking that. And so I'd love to know what percentage do you think of dentists who own their practices have, have had a little fun in one of their chairs? Uh, 30% maybe my, yeah, my take was about a third. Yeah. That would be my thought. That would be my thought. Now you work with your significant other. I do. So that would be. A little easier. That, that, yeah, that's sort of, yeah. Um, I, when I was in, in high school and, and college, I would, more so in college, I don't think this was high school. I'm pretty sure this was like freshman, sophomore college. During the summers when I'd come home from, from college, I would uh, work in an oral surgeon, a local oral surgeon's office, like scrubbing instruments, doing setups and that kind of stuff. Uh -huh. um, breaking down rooms, just basic, basic sort of entry level right. assistant crap. Uh -huh. And, um, his office manager was his, uh, was his, um, I think they were just dating at the time. I don't think they were actually married, but, uh, there were rumors around the office of, of, you know, of, of, of stuff, um, during lunch hours and things like that, which is, is a whole different level. Um, I've not reached that level before. Um, so, you know, I mean, that's, I, I just feel like, I feel like it has to be, it's at least, it's at least 20%, and I feel like it's very potentially more. Huh. Yeah. I, I may have mentioned this in the, in the chair uh, or in the, in the thread. Um, and, and someone mentioned about how uh, uncomfortable that would be. And I, and I just don't, I don't think that's necessarily the case because of the adjustable nature of the chair. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. 
The adjustable ch- nature of the chair really offsets a lot of problems. You, you, how, how tall are you? 6'4". Okay, so there are, I mean, there, you, you just have, you've dealt with those issues your whole life. Yeah. Of, of weird bending knees and weird positions and yeah. things. Yeah, uh-huh. And the chair offsets all that because it moves. Exactly. So it just changes everything. If and you so can do the Kama actually, Sutra, you can figure out an ADEC chair. Absolutely. In fact, I, I really feel like that should be ADEX next foray. I mean, we've uh-huh. got so, you know, over, we've talked, we talked about this with uh, girl boss Tara Harden um, a little bit about, about chairs because we had a question about weight, you know, a patient's weight and, and chairs. And so we, we dove deep down into like the Teneo and the Intego, uh-huh. the sort of high end uh, flagship dense Blycerona chairs. And you've got, you know, a deck who's out there putting massagers and, and all those sort of things in there. And I think that may be the next sort of iteration is is some um you know just hidden features in the chair that that a normal patient wouldn't find but that you know you knew as as the owner and the dentist was there that you could then utilize after hours i would rather have that than a massager for my patients what do you think oh yeah for sure (laughs) i hope your daughters aren't listening to the show lance me too or your daughter's boyfriend who i think you (laughs) you attempted to like yeah shotgun bully him into listening to the show yeah i hope he last i checked he still had not listened but what's his name uh, i'm not gonna say you don't have to give me his full name <laughs> just give me his first name kai i just want to talk kai uh-huh. what's up kai listen <laughs> i i know i know what what thoughts are rolling around your head right now and all i can tell you is um <laughs> is just don't mess with lance seriously he'll, he'll end you he'll end you easily and quickly and uh he's six four um he's got huge hands and and i'm not saying i know from firsthand experience but his hands can literally wrap around your entire neck um and and can choke you out a little bit so i just be a little careful kai that's all i'm saying just be a little careful word of the wise <laughs> poor kai he's mortified a little bit there's a lot of other people, I'm sure, who are mortified at listening to this as well. But, hey, oh, yeah. if you've got any stories about any NSFW stuff uh, in your dental chairs, um, good-ass journalist on Reddit would love to hear it. And, hell, we'd love to hear it too, right, Lance? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> um, not a great uh, uh, Reddit history here on good-ass journalists. They have one other post um, in the r- subreddit of Dadit. Which I guess is for huh. dads. You should join Dad It. It's 142,000 members. This is a subreddit for dads, wow. single dads, new dads, stepdads, tall dads, that's you, short dads, and any other kind of dad. If you've got kids in your life that you love and provide for, come join us as we discuss everything from birth announcements to code browns in the shower. Oh. I- I'm assuming that means your your kid is pooping in the shower. That's, is, that, is that code brown? That's it? where I'd go with, yeah. Okay, cool. I hope that I never have to find out about that. Yeah. Um, there, One other post was Father's Day stories. Journalist request. Hope that's allowed. Hi, I'm a parenting journalist doing a piece for a UK site where I'm collecting people's fun stories of Father's Day, whether from their own childhoods or as fathers. Inbox open. Anyone that has any fun ones and wants to be part of it. If you were up for sending a picture of yourself and your kid slash dad, whichever is relevant, across as well, that'd be awesome. Apologies if such a request is not cool. Fun dadding tidbit to make up for it. My 22-month-old has reached the point where when we're eating dinner, she'll point to me and say, Daddy, drink your beer, please. And then I have to have a big swig. Lovely stuff. Very proud. That's very sweet. Now, why they want to know why he's really into or she is really, I guess he, because it's dad, um, why he's really into like hearing about people boning in dental chairs is Uh a little strange. Uh Uh-huh. Maybe that's how they made. That's how. Maybe that's how. Where he made his daughter. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Who? uh, Whose turn is it for a song, Lance? Uh, That'd be you. Okay. Uh, I guess that's gonna about do it for tonight. It's uh, a little bit of a shorter episode. Is what we said we were gonna do. And look at it now. We're right (laughs) where we normally are. Pretty close. Only two questions. That's awesome. Um, It just. I don't know what happens, man. It just always happens. It does. It just always happens. Um, hey, share this with your friends. If you have any friends who are really into erotica relating to dental chairs, let them know about the show. Um, I feel it's probably the only show out there that's really covering that subject matter. Probably. Um, if you know anybody who's super into seeing and hearing about um, uh, Judge Judy's hot bod, um, 
share this with them. They're this that's who this is for. So we grow the show one listener at a time. Uh, how about subscribe? Uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify. Uh, how about rate and review? What's your favorite l- number, Lance? Big fan of five. I'm a huge fan of five. Huge fan of five. Um, hit us up on the web, workinginterferences.com. Hit us up on all of the social bullshits. Facebook, Working Interferences, Josh and Lance. Funny shit for dentists and dental team members. Twitter, at Winterferences. Instagram, at Winterferences. Uh, Lance can be found on Instagram at DR Timmerman DMD. I can be found on Instagram at Joshua Austin DDS. Um, time for my song, Lance. One time I did a song that I hated. Oh, you remember that? Yeah, I do vaguely. I couldn't. It was name it. Uh, Hosier. Okay. Hosier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hosier. Sure. Hosiery. Something like that. Yeah. H- hated that song. I forget what the name of it was. Somebody cries power. Nina cries power was his horrible mm. piece of shit song. Okay. The absolute fucking trainer. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, I have a song that I like, but from a band that I hate. Oh? <laughs> you ever have a band that you just don't like? Lots. You don't like anything that they do. Uh-huh. And it's there's no other reason other than you just don't, I just don't, like I didn't, the first song I've ever, I ever heard of theirs, I hated uh-huh. and I just never gave them a chance. Okay. The band is Panic at the Disco. All right. First off, I hate them because there's punctuation in the middle of their name of their band. Okay. Because it's panic with an exclamation mark. Uh-huh. And then at the disco. Okay. I, I I don't get it. I don't understand it. Why is there punctuation in the middle? It so, screws everything up. Not a it fan of algorithm. 303. What is 303? I, I think they had an exclamation in there too. I don't know that. Yeah, I don't know that band. I, I don't need. You don't need. I don't need punctuation in the middle. In the middle. You want to put punctuation at the end? I'm cool with that. But I don't understand it in the middle. They had a song that came out a few years ago that I hated called I Write Sins, Not Tragedies. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it's the one. It, there's something about someone's getting married, and they just keep calling the bride a whore just over and over and over. Well, they're not wrong. In, in the song. Well, I, it's not for me to judge. That's the thing. That's what the thing. And I just don't understand the song. I didn't like the the, the hook. I didn't like the the melody. I didn't like any of it, and I didn't like the lyrics. That the lyrics were dumb, and so I just turned this band off in my You're head. You're dumb. I yeah. There's, I'm. <laughs> I agree with you on that. However, I feel like they're dumber than me. Yeah. Um. And so I just tuned them out, and then not long ago on uh, Alt Nation on Sirius, they had a new song uh-huh. uh, by uh, Panic. Yeah. At the disco. Um, called High Hopes, and I had like, damn it, I like this song. Mm. What is wrong with me? Yeah. So this is a song I like from a band I hate. Um, <laughs> and so if you've ever had that before, yeah. shoot us over some some stories about that because I love hearing that because every once in a while, a band I hate comes up with a song. Um, oh, here, you sent me this, 303. Uh-huh. Um, I do not know these people. <laughs> They're electronic music, so of course. I'll, I'll let you... you you might recognize some of the bigger hits, maybe. Okay. It was like ten years I'll ago. I'll take I'll take a look yeah. and, and, and see. But for now it's it's panic at the disco. Uh-huh. I just don't what Yeah. I just don't get it. I don't get it, Lance. I don't get it's it. It's nine in the afternoon. <laughs> uh so enjoy this uh high hopes from uh Panic at the Disco. For Lance Timmerman, I'm Joshua Austin. Peace. Stay fresh, cheese bags, and happy Thanksgiving. We hope you guys have a great holiday. Peace.
said, don't give up, it's a little complicated, all tied up, no more love. Tied up, no more love.